The second that I saw that I had failed my exam through the instant results, my heart sank because one, I realized that I had failed my exam. And two, I felt like I had wasted the past five months of my life studying for something and getting no result. If you've recently failed an actuarial exam and can relate to this feeling, then this video is for you because by the end of it, you're going to learn what I did to bounce back after failing exam P and several other actuarial exams so that you can regain your motivation and your confidence and kick that exam's butt the next time around. So it really comes down to kind of two primary things that helped me get through this and they may seem sort of simple, but these are truthfully what helped me. So the first one is, you know how on your phone there are settings that you can change so that you're not allowed to go on certain apps or it limits the amount of time you can spend on certain apps? Well, you need to do that same thing for your study materials. And it needs to last at least a week, ideally even two weeks. Oh, so not studying is the new strategy for success. Hmm. So basically, I just needed to take a complete rest from studying because I had basically been studying every single day for months on end. At the time, I didn't really know that I should be taking break days because it would help me to mentally relax and just refresh my mind and ultimately that would help me study better later on. I didn't know that at the time. I know it now and it's something that I recommend to all the future actuaries that I work with studying for exams, but it's not something that's very intuitive. It's something that a lot of future actuaries struggle with is taking those break days because they just feel like they should be studying all the time. They get that guilty feeling like I should not be relaxing right now. I should be studying and I had that exact feeling as well. So I really needed that time just to do all the things that I had been neglecting, maybe cleaning, me time, time to spend with family and friends, and I needed to just not think about studying at all. And this is really, really important because if I had jumped right back into studying, I would have continued to be burnt out. I probably would have started to resent the exam. I wouldn't have wanted to do studying anymore. This mental refresh time was absolutely necessary for me and I can't even imagine continuing to study after failing an exam and study, like starting to study right away again. I think it can be extremely demotivating when you spend so much time studying for an exam and then you end up failing it. It just feels like you want to give up. It feels like you don't want to do this anymore and to get rid of that feeling you just have to take some time away from it. So that's the first thing I did. So. If I didn't take that time off, I don't think this second part would have helped nearly as much as it actually did. And that was my internal desire or my internal, yeah, I guess desire is a good word, to challenge myself. I am someone that absolutely wants to be able to prove to myself that I can do certain things. And for me, becoming an actuary and passing these exams was something I knew I could do, but I would not let myself give up on that challenge because I knew I could do it and I wanted to prove myself that I could do it. And I think that's something that every future actuary needs is that internal desire to challenge themselves. I don't think that this desire to keep moving forward and the motivation can come from external factors like the money or the the way like the reputation that an actuarial career has or even other people like sometimes people get into the actuarial field only because their parents have pushed them towards that direction or something like that and I really don't think that someone can stay motivated if it doesn't come from an internal desire to strongly want to pass that exam and just prove it to yourself that you can do it and that internal desire is what kept me pushing I absolutely needed the break beforehand to even have the ability to want to continue moving forward, but realistically, this internal motivation is what kept me going. Hmm, how many exam failures does it take to prove that you are most certainly insane? Asking for a friend. I also think it's really important to have a genuine interest in the math and the insurance that you're studying because if you don't find these topics interesting and you don't like them, then it's not going to be something that you enjoy doing for work and it's not going to make the studying for the exams enjoyable either. This is something that needs to be a long-term 
commitment for you. It needs to be something that fits into your lifestyle for the long term. It's not something that you're just going to be doing for a year or two. So I think it's really important that you actually enjoy what you're doing so that you can actually sustain this type of lifestyle where a lot of your time does go towards studying. And if you don't like the math and you don't like the insurance concepts, then why even do it? So that is also something that I think every future actuary needs to have is not only that desire to pass the exam or that internal challenge, but also the extreme love for math and the, the challenge of learning these different insurance concepts. By the way, you might have to take your exam again, but you only have to click the like button once. Now, looking back at it, there's actually one thing I should have done that I didn't end up doing, and if I had, it would have probably significantly increased my chances of passing the next time around, and it would have also helped to give me a renewed sense of confidence and faith that I could actually do this. And that was to reevaluate, or I guess evaluate, what actually went wrong. Why did I fail this exam? A lot of the time I assumed that it was just because I didn't get enough time to study. Oh yeah, blaming time for your exam failures. Classic move. And that was absolutely a big part of it. I am someone that tries to do it all. I say yes to so many things because I wish I could do it all and in my head I think I'm gonna have time to do it all but a lot of the time I don't and that means that I didn't end up having enough time to study a lot of the time. But on top of that, I am 100% sure that there are other things that I could have done better to make my studying more efficient, more effective, so that I could actually get more studying done in less time. Or maybe there are some things I could have done on exam day to help me get through the exam better, to reduce my anxiety and nervousness, those kind of things. Like, I should have been thinking, what could have gone better or what did I do wrong that I could change for next time and having that idea in your mind of what you're going to do different is oftentimes a really good way to kick yourself into gear and realize that okay I see my mistakes now where I went wrong now I'm going to fix that and that gives me a whole bunch of hope that I can actually do this next time because I'm going to be doing things differently. And that's something I wish I would have done, but I didn't. Now, there are actually some cases where I might actually recommend that you don't go and study for the exam again and try to pass it. You may already know that I no longer work as an actuary. I spent about six years or so working in actuarial roles. And now I just decided that I want to help people become actuaries and get into the entry level roles and the internships just like I did because it's very competitive out there and it's a tough market to break into. So my career goals kind of change and it's absolutely fine if your career goals change. I think a lot of the time future actuaries get hyper focused on passing this exam because it's what they've been trying to do. So they try maybe again and again and again and they try to pass it. But the thing is, if passing that exam no longer aligns with your career goals, then you should just not pass it. The last exam that I wrote, I didn't pass it. It was a failure for me. And that is not the reason that I decided to quit the actuarial career and decided to do something else. It just is what it is. That Passing that exam no longer aligned with what I wanted to get out of my career. It no longer fit my personal goals. And that's totally fine. I, a lot of people are scared about stopping something or they're hesitant to stop something that they were initially pursuing. If it's your goal now to be an actuary, yes, absolutely go past those. But down the road or maybe you have decided that the actuarial career actually isn't what you thought it would be or it's not what you want to pursue anymore, then don't force yourself to continue to struggle through these exams and stress about them all the time when you could be doing something else in terms of your careers and gaining qualifications in other ways. So if that's the case for you, then I would highly recommend you just decide you're not going to pursue this anymore and that is okay. I also knew in my mind that I could always go back. I could definitely pass these exams in the future if I wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah. You definitely could. It's totally feasible to go back to them and that's something that you can consider as well. It's not like just because you decide to quit now you can never go back either. So yeah, I think really what I'm trying to say here is 
if you're not feeling this anymore, then don't push yourself to do something that you hate just to say that you passed an exam. A lot of the time, the only people that really care that you passed it is yourself. And a lot of the time, the only people that really care if you fail it is yourself. So you're not really letting anyone down. You're just being true to yourself and what you want out of your life. So when I was going through my actuarial exams, I thought that the exams were unnecessarily difficult. Like, why did the pass rates need to be so low? Well, let me ask you something, and you can answer this in the comments. Do you think that it should be easier to pass actuarial exams? And if it was, do you think that that would negatively affect the reputation of the actuarial career? Hey, maybe we should just give out credentials for participating. Let me know down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.